Hello everyone, welcome to Aptera Owners Club. This is part two of the video talking about the environmental costs of uh, electric vehicles. And in this video, we're going to talk about the toxicity of lithium ion batteries. And um, there are significant toxicities and problems with lithium ion batteries that I think we should be aware of as consumers of electric vehicles. Okay, but before we get started, I think uh, it's important to know the main types of lithium ion batteries. I found a great article from this place called Dragonfly Energy where they talk about the six main types of lithium batteries. There are uh, LCO, LMO, LFP, NMC, NCA, and LTO batteries. So we'll go over them. The first is lithium iron phosphate. This is the battery technology that has um, good thermal stability so it's very safe and has a long it's very durable it just has low um, uh, density so it doesn't have as much energy per weight so that's the uh, problem um, with these um, lithium iron phosphate batteries but otherwise um, as you we noticed from the previous video they have low energy costs to manufacture almost half of the other types of lithium ion batteries and the other great thing is it does not use cobalt, which is a problematic um, component, as you'll see from this video. Next is lithium cobalt oxide. This is one of the older batteries, and these have very high um, specific energy. So they hold a lot of energy for the amount of weight they have. Um, but they're pretty dangerous, and um, they're kind of an older chemistry. So they were used in phones and um, laptops and stuff, but uh, they, they're kind of going out of favor. Next is the lithium manganese oxide. These are uh, used in power tools and some um, electric vehicles, but this is not the uh, dominant uh, chemistry either. So nickel manganese cobalt oxide, this is an NMC battery. These are the most common battery um, in electric vehicles. And uh, th these are the ones that are um, gonna be used in the Aptera. And then there's the NCA, which is the lithium nickel cobalt aluminum. These are the ones, they're very similar, um, but they um, are the co most common one used in Teslas until pretty recently. And then there's a lithium tantanate. These aren't used very often. They're for um, aerospace and military use, so you won't see too many of these. Okay, so the major ones are this NCA, this NMC, which is what Aptera uses, and the lithium iron phosphate, which seems like that's the one that uh, we should be moving towards for the reasons that we're gonna see here. All right, so this is a great Wired article that was published back in 2018. It's interesting because this first video, they show that this is the testing grounds of a Chinese-Slovenian joint venture, which is Elafe, which we, which I don't think any of the readers of um, Wired know what they are, but we all know that Elafe is the hub motor manufacturer for the Aptera. So the main problem is, is that their lithium is mainly mined out of the high Andes in South uh, America, near Bolivia, Argentina, and Chile. It looks like this. They drill into here, and they get the brine out, and then they let it um, evaporate, and they shovel up the uh, lithium oxide, um, lithium-rich salts into here, and then refine it. This is not very energy intense, um, but the problem is, is it takes a lot of water. And according to this, it takes approximately half a million gallons of water for every ton of lithium that's used. And in certain parts of this area, they, the mining activities consume the vast majority of the region's water, which is um, really bad for the locals because they can't, um, they can't farm and they can't grow food. So large corporations are using up all the water in an area and the native people in that area are suffering, basically. And these evaporation pools um, leave toxic chemicals. And they basically, what we're doing is we're taking the environmental impact away from us because as we move from internal combustion vehicles to battery vehicles, they're very clean for the consumer, but um, where the uh, raw materials are mined, it damages their land and their water and their livelihood. And there was a lithium mine that leaked in Tibet that killed uh, all the fish in the rivers there because they uh, the mine leaks some toxic uh, um, some toxic chemicals from their mining operation. The other major problem is that um, all these uh, lithium uh, batteries, like the ones that uh, Aptera are using, which is the uh, nickel manganese cobalt, uh, cobalt and nickel, 
um, are um, very dangerous to mine. Cobalt is found mainly in the Republic of Congo. They, they think about 70% of the world's cobalt comes from um, the Congo. And the price of cobalt has quadrupled in the past uh, uh, two years. And this was in 2018. It's probably gone up even more. What this means that cobalt is so abundant there that uh, you can just find it everywhere. And what that means is they have what they call artisanal mines, which is a euphemism, if anything. And what they mean by that is that just local people are starting up mines in their backyards and their neighborhoods, and it's extracted by hand. It's a toxic chemical, and they're using child labor without any protective equipment. And it extracts a lot of um, health costs and environmental costs in the Congo um, through this cobalt mining. Uh, which is a major problem. So um, because of these two reasons, um, people are thinking that you know you have to uh, recycle these batteries, but recycling these batteries currently are very difficult. Um, it, it takes a lot of energy to extract them. You have to burn them and find them. And when you burn them, um, they, it makes hydrofluoric acid because some of the uh, electrolytes in there cause uh, contain fluoride. And that cause hydrofluoric acid is extremely dangerous and um, they have to manage that and also lithium batteries at the end of life are like partially full and you can't if they have to be they're kind of unstable so they're very um, dangerous to transport and um, recycling is uh, not hasn't been quite figured out so that's like a lot of research needs to happen on recycling these things because the amount of lithium batteries that we're going to make is a uh, is uh, incre increasing exponentially um, I think that uh, this article said that the projected capacity is going to go up to about 800 gigawatt hours. Yeah. So we, they produced 100 gigawatt hours in 2017, and it's expected to go to 800 gigawatt hours in 2027. I don't know what the current uh, worldwide production is, but um, there is, uh, you know, Tesla's building gigafactories all over the place. So they, they alone are going to produce a lot of um, lithium ion batteries. So for these reasons, it seems like the best thing to do is to move to lithium iron phosphate batteries. And after seeing what the environmental costs um, uh, at the mining site, as well as the greenhouse gas production of batteries, it, it, we need to understand that probably buying the smallest battery possible that works for your needs is what's best for the environment. Because having a giant battery pack just causes a lot more environmental damage and uh, more greenhouse gases to manufacture it. If you're not going to use that giant battery pack often, uh, then that is probably not the most uh, conscientious thing to do. So uh, I will link these um, articles below in the description. I especially thought that this article about the types of lithium batteries was very interesting and informative. It has a little um, plot showing you know, the safety, specific power, energy, cost, lifespan, and performance, and you see um, how they match up. And if you look at this, this is NMC. That's the one that Aptera uses. It's pretty good in all aspects. And then here is um, lithium iron phosphate. It's really great uh, performance and safety and lifespan and cost, but pretty bad in um, energy density here. That's, that's their biggest weak point. NMC has really great uh, performance and cost and pretty good safety, and that's why it's a very popular one. And um, this is the one that's used in aerospace and military operations, and you can see why. It's really great at everything except for specific energy, but it's, it's good at everything else. All right, well, um, tell me your thoughts on uh, the toxicity of um, lithium iron, ion batteries. I mean, did you guys know about this before? It was kind of news to me, and I thought it was quite interesting. Um, didn't realize the uh, environmental costs, um, especially to the Congo and to South America from uh, these components. And so it makes me really understand that I probably need to buy the smallest battery pack possible uh, for that, that works for me. And that's why I think it's great that um, Aptera is making a very efficient vehicle because for the same battery pack size, you can go a lot farther, like a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack in an Aptera gives you 400 mile range. And to get the same range in, um, in, an, in the, uh, the Lucid, you know, they had to have a battery pack that was 
almost over 100 kilowatt hours. So more than double the size. So that's great. And the efficiency of it makes it so that the greenhouse gas emissions um, from the electricity produced is, you know, one third of a, re of a um, standard electric car in the Aptera. So I think we can all feel pretty good about that.